I was talking about these terms. So let me give some names to these terms. This is what we call on-site energy. And on-site energy, this one is equal to that one. And these two uh, what? Oh, I think equal to each other. Yes, hopping integral. Let's call it hopping integral. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, these ones are just one, and these ones are orbital overlap. And indeed, if you go and look at the matrix that we create, you will see them. Let, instead of this printing everything, let me just print this matrix, print VM. Do you see? This is the on-site energy, and this is the hopping integral. What else? And if you plot also SM, let me also plot SM. There's one, one, and some orbital overlap, okay? So we have calculated potential energy in here using this inversion, etc. So let me write the total energy is equal to kinetic energy that we calculated earlier on. Is it still there? Let me just calculate it over here one more time. Kinetic energy is this one, which we took out, if you remember. Now we put it back in, and we can now print, oops, I keep doing the same mistake, print the total energy. Did we print the total energy or not? Let me remove this. Yeah. So the total energies come out as minus 124 and minus 129. So let's compare it with this one. Not too bad. Not exactly right, but also not too bad. I hope I didn't make any mistakes here. <coughs> but do you see that with this approximation of writing functions as the, their sums uh, seems to be working. There is another way of doing it. You can also ignore this SM, if you remember that matrix was this matrix. You can just assume that these orbital overlaps are too small to be considered. Then you just have an identity matrix. Then you can just erase that matrix from here. If you do that, you only have this kind of situation. And let me plot the energies and also the, the wave functions. So we have minus 125 in that case and minus 129-ish. So let's compare them, 129 close to this one and the other one is close to minus 126, uh, 125. So the lower energy one is the bonding because if you look at here, it's basically one, one. So you are basically take, so, okay, let me explain. What we got at the, at the end is a situation like this. I have on-site energy E zero. equals to energy times AB. This is a simplified version of what we have just seen, okay? And this one we can call tight binding. So this is representing an integral, right? And this is on-site energy. If you solve this, what do you get? If you solve this eigenvalue equation, you need to get the determinant of this one to zero, right? E zero minus E. Have you done this before in this class? So to solve a, you know, 
Did I do it on the preliminaries videos? No. So it, I'm doing it now. I have an eigenvalue equation. Have you done this before? Yes. Okay. Eigenvalue equation, I can set it to zero, determinant to zero, and I will get the solutions. So setting determinant zero means that E minus E squared, so this times this minus that times that, right, equals to zero. Then E zero minus E is equal to plus minus T. <coughs> then the energy is basically E0 plus minus T. Okay? So that hopping integral corresponds to how much shift you are going to experience uh, once. And what was the, what was it composed of, the hopping integral? It's basically the function on the left, dagger, times the potential on the right, times the function on the left, or vice versa. Function on the right times the potential on the left times the potential. Did you remember this? Because it's basically these are FPPNs, FPNNs, FNPPs, or FNNPs. So basically, this is what's going. I just made a mistake when I said function on the left, function on the right. Let's see. This is function on the left, dagger, times potential on the left, times function on the right. Yes? So if we bring these wells closer, then these overlaps increase. And we are expecting more shifts. So let's do that. Let's say I'm bringing these to closer. So let me just make it 6. Do you see that there is a significant shift now? Yeah. Uh, before it was like this, now it's getting larger. And the values are minus 135 and minus 116. So let's do it with tight binding, something close, okay? And the uh, overlap integrals, let's also print this. Now these values are now much larger than before. Yes? So, then uh, we actually have a simplified vision for these systems. That simplified vision is this. I treat every atom like a dot, okay? It has on-site energy and some interaction energy, right? And I build, so I give these atoms some numbers, 1 and 2. Then I just build this matrix accordingly, 1, 2, 1, 2. And on-site energy, I write E0 here. The minus Ts, I write here, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, etc. So, and then I solve this matrix, and what I get is eigenvalues. So I start with E0 here. E0 here, when I bring them together, just like in the molecular orbital theory, I go to E0 minus T, E0 plus T. So far, so good? <coughs> and if you do the proper algebra, you will see that you, you can get AB for this one, A will be equal to B, meaning that you will actually have that one plus the other one. So the, the bonding will look something like this. Okay? For this one, you will have this one minus the other one. So it will look like this. Bonding, antibonding. Electrons accumulated at the center forming covalent bond, and electrons depleted from the center, forming uh, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, LUMO. So HOMO and LUMO. Good? Yes. Good. Now let's go further. 
uh, we have seen how the tight binding works, hopefully. Now let's talk about something very, very deep. Very, very simple, but very, very deep as well. I've already talked about this in MSM 517. So let me repeat myself. <clears throat> this time, I'm going to look at, so this is SSH model. Let me tell you what do we mean by SSH. Oops. We mean this paper, uh, teaching shared um, literature. So it's in the shared folder. So S S H model. Okay, it's basically <coughs> this paper where they are looking at uh, acetylene. So. <coughs> You can have double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, carbon chain. And you can either terminate, the last ones can be either double bonds or single bonds, and it will matter. But for now, for now, let's consider an infinite chain like this. So we are imagining carbon atoms that go on forever, but double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond kind of thing. So let's call this one T1, the interaction, the hopping, and this one T2, okay? If you remember, that's why the Newton part was so important. We, we already know how to treat this, this kind of infinities, right? Uh, you can think of them as wave functions plus an e to the ika on top of it. Do you remember that thing that we did with the atomic chains? Yes. Okay. We, we are going to do the same thing. So here's the thing. I have an atom here. Let's call it number one. I have an atom here, number two and let's say they are double bonded, or let me not say whether they are double bonded or not. The interaction over here is T1. Then there is the image of the first atom again, the second atom again, and these ones are connected by T2. So this goes on forever. T2, T1, T2, T1, T2, T1, T2, T1, T2, T1. Now, how do I solve this? The way that we treat this is if this distance is A, then you can think of it this way. If I had only this one, I would put like this, right? E0, so let me just form the matrix. Okay, one, two, one, two. <coughs> just for now, concentrate on these two. Is one interacting with two? Yes? So I have minus T1 here. Is two interacting with one? Yes, yes? so I have minus T1 here, and there are E0s. Let's say for this system, this system is special, and E0s are zero. So we are not even bothering with that, okay? Now let's start including these other terms. This one, for example. So two interacting with one, but notice that it's on the other side of the unit cell. And do you remember what we were doing with this? We were multiplying these ones with e to the i k a. Do you remember those parts? So we are doing the same thing here. Minus t2. Okay, this is not important. <laughs> t2 e to the i k a. 
and the minus t2 e to the minus ika. Uh, why, why, uh, what about this one? Where did it come from? From the other one, right? From this one. Okay, that's it. That's the model <laughs> uh, that we need to understand. But this model is so, so deep. I mean, unbelievably deep. <coughs> Let me show you. So I set A to 1. What is M? I have no idea what M is. <laughs> Let's erase it. OK. I set T1 to be T and T2 to be 1 over T, OK? And I'm going to change T so that if I put T1, uh, if I put T to 1.2, one of them will be 1.2, the other one will be 1 over 1.2. If I put it to 1 over 1.2, this one will be 1 over 1.2, and this one. In principle, you, you might think that, and rightly so, you might think that it shouldn't matter whether you put, whether you draw the unit cell of this structure over here, right? In which case the middle one is the weaker bond or whether you draw the unit cell over here, right? Should be the same and energy bands should be the same and indeed they are. The energy bands are the same. Let me show you. Let me show you. So, do you see the matrix here? The thing that we just drawed? So, I take that matrix, I solve the eigenvalue problem, I plot the energies. No, that's the surprise. Yeah. So, let me change T greater than 1. Do you see? There is a band gap. Oh, surprise, there's a band gap. This is awesome. That's another thing. Like, this model teaches you band gaps and whatnot. Do you have any questions at this point? Good. So, in this case, the weaker bond is at the center. Okay? If I go over here, the stronger bond is at the center. No. What did I just say? This one is the stronger bond at the center. No, this is the weaker bond at the center. Let, let me just show you. T1 is the one that is at the center. And right now T1 is T. And T is lower than 1. So the weaker bond is at the center. It's a band gap. When we are at 1, the band gap closes. Why the band gap closes? Because. It's, it's just equal, so it's really a folding. It's really like something like this that has been folded in, okay? We have discussed this a little bit. If you change this, the band cap reopens. And we can look at a certain value that would correspond to the inverse of the other value. For example, this is 2. Just memorize this band. You have this in your memory? Yes. Let me go to 0 0.5. <coughs> it is the same band, right? It doesn't matter. It shouldn't. But deep down, there are lots of stuff going on. So now I'm going to plot the same thing, the same problem. But I'm going to plot a bunch of things together with it. Oh, no. Ah, this is the thing. So this is our band. If I go up, there's a band gap. If I go down, there's a band gap. But there are things that are going on deep down stairs. For example, yeah, exactly. Let me tell you what is this circle. 
This circle, is, I, I'm getting this circle by plotting, let me show you where I do that. I'm just plotting, do you see the matrix element on the uh, Hamiltonian? There's, I'm just plotting it real versus imaginary, okay? And it comes out as a circle, okay? <coughs> But notice that there is a significant difference in a sense that when I have t greater than 1, that circle is outside of the center, outside of the middle point, outside of 0, 0. So there is a circle over here that goes around like this. Okay? But if I go below t equals to 1, then that circle actually goes around 0, 0. So what? you say, right? Uh, but this is something called, right now, it's topologically trivial. New, new word, new word, topology, donuts, spheres, going around, etc. It's as if, imagine this one. It's very hard to imagine, but there is a torus, okay? When t is greater than 1, I'm going around the torus, I'm coming back, but I don't wind up the torus, okay? I just go around here. I mean, I come back. But if I'm below, then uh, the point is inside. I'm going around the torus. So I'm creating uh, some topologically non-trivial state, okay? I will explain more. Let me also talk about... Great. Awesome. Homotopy equal to a uh, single point. And this one? Um, it is not. It is not. Very good. What happens when t is directly equal to 1? Then I go right over the point. I'm actually crossing the point. So let me also plot one of the eigenvalues, eigen, eigenvectors. I'm plotting the real and the imaginary part. I, I know this is way too unnecessary, but I just, you know how in the very first lesson I said that when I teach, I also learn? Hi, Atta. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. It's, I'm teaching myself this. So I, I'm also plotting the states. So if you go above, and I'm also adding the k points here a little bit so that I see how it goes. So as you can see over here, the state goes like this, comes back, and comes like this. Okay? So it didn't make a turn. Okay? Uh, imagine this. You are going in the k direction and doing... Uh, you could go to the same place by doing this and this. Or you can go to the same place by doing this. Okay? So that's the difference between these two. Uh, this is the topologically non trivial state. Uh, sorry, trivial state. This is trivial. This, there's no winding. And if I go below, it's topologically non trivial because, as you can see, I start somewhere. So why it is shifted? Because of k points. I add k points so I see how it's shifted. As you can see, goes around and comes back to the place, but in the meantime, does a one single uh, full turn. Good, very good. But as you can see, we don't see anything in the bands. Okay? We do see, though, we do see a significant difference if we take it finite. Okay? <coughs> what I have here is a chain of length 100. It's 100 atoms long. And either it ends up with a stronger bond or it ends up with a weaker bond. That's what I'm looking after. Now, when, when I'm at the topologically trivial state, there's a band gap and it just follows the, ba the band that I draw the band that I draw for the bulk, for the infinite system, 
is exactly the same as the bands I see here. And if I plot this state, it just looks like a sign of whatever, okay? But if I go to the topologically non-trivial regime, let me go slower. There is an edge state that forms right in the middle of the band gap. And it has everything to do with the topology. You know, like the, the thing that is going on here is that I can just, if I'm not winding up the torus, I can just unwind it as much as I want. There is nothing that has to cross. But if I'm crossing it, if I'm winding it up, no matter what I do, I have to pass through one. You know, if, if I'm not winding the torus, I can put, I, I can take it down and take it, I can make sure that it, it's not crossing any <coughs> point. But if I'm winding, it has to cross. And that's this crossing, okay? Uh, is it relevant? Uh, just go to any condensed matter, and there you go. Topological, quantum, whatever. I mean, that topological is this topological. And yes, I tried it <laughs> before coming, so that it's very effective that you see topology right at the top. But it doesn't matter. I mean, you can go to previous volumes. This I didn't do before. So some issue, any issue. Must be some topology there. Asymmetry, decodable, whatever. Z2 symmetry has something to do with topology. Just trust me. Or I can just topo. Yeah, topological phase. Ah, there is our SSH system. Do you see? Let's look at this paper. We have all the time in the world. Topological phase detection through high harmonic spectroscopy in extended SSH chains. Exactly. Do you see those windings and do you see those edge states and whatnot? What? That's, I said that middle thing. Yes, that middle thing is there. Okay, very good. So, uh, I know this is very low probability, but in case you go into this field, the thing that uh, I started from very complicated sides of this field, and if I knew that the, the atomic chains that I have studied many years before were already presenting this topological thing, I would, I mean, it's, a, it's the best starting point. Then you put these change, chains in two dimensions, and you see that just like in one dimension you have edge states here, in two dimensions you have edge states that are one-dimensional, that go at the top, at, at the bottom, blah, 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 okay? So, in case you are interested. This was a, a parenthesis. Let's now come to the point of your homework, okay? <coughs> your homework is related with another paper. Let me just show you this is just not, I mean, it has been cited 5,700 times, okay? It's, it's a nice paper. Your homework will be to produce these bands using tight winding, okay? Now, let me <coughs> pre prepare you for this homework. Have you heard of graphene? Yes. It's basically <coughs> honeycomb atom, atoms of carbon, right? Just like this. Now, if you cut this graphene in a certain direction, then you get uh, nano ribbons. If you cut graphene, for example, here, it seems like they are cutting it from here, but no, it's actually trying to say that 
it extends in that direction. So this dots means, does not mean cutting, it means continuing extension. Somehow I think it has to do something with coming from a culture where they write also vertically, because if you are extending, we would put it this way, right? But they put it that way. Anyways, there are zig the, this is called zigzag nanoribbon because there are zigzags at the edges. So this is where they cut it from. <coughs> Do you see? And it continues periodically, infinitely. This other one also goes periodically in this direction. But do you see the differences between these two? In this one, there are zigzags. The, the zigzags of the honeycomb are in this direction. The other one is cut actually perpendicularly. So if you can see this pattern over here appears over here. OK? So this is called zigzag nanoribbon. This is called armchair nanoribbon. Are you with me? Why armchair? I mean, they, they think that this looks like an armchair. Do you think this is, looks like an armchair? I never understood why. I think this is the case. So these are the backs of the armchair. This is the back side of the armchair. And there's a perspective thing going on here. <laughs> you, you see? <laughs> like, OK, let me draw an armchair for you. <coughs> Do you see the armchair? That's the thing. So these are the carbon atoms, these are the hydrogen atoms, and the rest is imagined. So that it has Do you see? Yes. Anyways. Let me just delete it. So let me tell you about armchair nanoribbons. OK. So I'm just going to copy this in, in my notebook here. So you have something like this. Let me not extend it too much so that it's easy to draw. OK, and it repeats forever. So this is, these are some hydrogen atoms at the edges, some hydrogen atoms at the edges. <laughs> So what is the unit cell of this one? Something like this, right? Do you see that the rest is repeating? Are you with me or not? Yeah. Yes. Now, what this paper tells you is that you can approximate the bands of armchair non ribbon by taking a hopping integral of T equals to minus 2.7 electron volts, OK? Just nearest neighbor's hoppings are T. So far, so good. But at the edges, it tells us that at the edges, they are close by. So instead of T, you should use TE, T edge, which is 12% times 1.12. So since the atoms get closer, you remember the wells getting closer and overlap integrals growing up? That's what's happening over here as well. That's it. So let me give you an example, a simpler example that I have written a code for. So let's say I have a unit cell like this. And let me repeat this unit cell. Do you agree that this is forming a nanoribbon? Yeah. Let me put the bonds like this. 
So this is a simple nano ribbon. And let me put some numbers here. This is first atom, second, third, fourth. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's write a tight binding for this small nano ribbon together. Okay. So how many atoms do we have in a unit cell? Four atoms. We have four atoms. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, is there an interaction? So again, the on-site energies are zero. Okay? Zero, 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 zero. Is there an interaction with one and two? Yes. Yes, and it is T, right? It's, it's uh, T itself is minus, so I will just write T. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Instead of minus T and having T positive, it's T is minus. Hmm. How about one three? Is there a connection with one three? Nope. No. One four? Nope. Are you sure? Yes, so we should not forget about two things. First thing is that this hopping is TE because it's at the edges. And second thing is that it's E to the minus IKA. Okay? So I have TE times E to the minus IKA. How about 2, 1? There is a hopping. 2, 3? Is it T or T E? They are not on the edges. Isn't this an edge? So this is an edge and this is an edge. This is also edge, this is also edge, this is also edge. Does it make sense or not? Yes? So I should write here T E. Yes? Yes. Yes? This is zero. 1, 3, no connection, 3, 2, T, E, right? T, E, goes both ways. What is 3, 4? T, uh, 4, 1, E to the plus I, K, A, right? Because it's on this side. <coughs> Do you remember this stuff? Yes. Then 0, 4, 3, T. That's our matrix, right? And here is our program. T is minus 2.7. T, E is minus 2.7, 1.12. K goes from 0 to pi over A. Why? Because that's how it goes in the paper. So it goes from 0 to pi, OK? I will make you all a condensed matter physicist <laughs> soon. So do you see this is our matrix? Do you see that it is the same thing? 0 t, 0 t, e times e to the whatever. 0 t, 0 t, e, blah, blah, blah. Then what do we have? Solve the eigenvalue equation. Plot the bands. And I don't need even to run this, but this is what you get. Okay? These are this is the band for a specific nano ribbon which has one, two, three, four atoms. Okay? But the ones over here have more atoms. So you need to write I, I mean, is this N A number of atoms or uh, we should really look over here. So it says that this is 11 armchair, uh, armchair non-ribbon. So where is 11? Let me think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So our non-ribbon is 2 because 1, 2. So you should do this for... 12, 13, and 14. You might be thinking that I'm torturing you, but if you just 
get yourself whatever drink you like to drink when you do physics, draw this system and start writing T's, you will see some pattern. Okay? Once you see that pattern, it will be easier to code. Or, or you can just do it brute force. You are doing it only for three null ribbons anyways. Because earlier on, <laughs> I would ask actually to generate this plot, which is for all the null ribbons possible. I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you to, find, to figure out these bands and compare it with the paper. And the paper has been cited 5,700 times, so must be something meaningful, right? Any questions? Can you open the graph that we previously did? Mm -hmm. Sure. What is the x-axis? Very good question. The x-axis is k, and it goes from 0 to pi. Let me actually make it fit. Yeah. So this is K and this is energy. Just like we got some bands over here for atomic chains, this is a yet another band for, this time it is for nanoribbons, okay? You, we had two atoms, we had two bands. We have four atoms, we have four bands. You will look at 12 times 2, so 24 atoms, you will get 24 bands, okay? And if you concentrate over here, you will see that the bands look like this one. But don't expect to get exactly the same bands because these are calculated using density functional theory. But your results should be close to this. And the closeness tells us that tight binding is a good approximation here. Any questions, comments, ideas? Don't worry, we are done with quantum mechanics. Next is statistical physics. Uh, I'm not very knowledgeable on that one either, so uh, it will be easy. My no, just like I'm not knowledgeable here, <laughs> I also uh, am very poor in statistical physics, so it will be a lot of fun. It will be easy, basic stuff, just like here, basic stuff. <laughs> okay, take care. <laughs>